Come, come here. All right. So, are you a maximist? No, I'm not a maximalist. You're a shitcoin. I'm not a shitcoiner. Then what are you? I like to make money, so I play in different coins and make sure I can uh, maximize the amount of money I'm making. So, what other coins do you invest in? Uh, I have some in Ethereum. I have some in VeChain. I have some in Woo. So, I have a few different coins. I'm at a point in my life where I can take a little bit more risk, so that's what I'm doing. What is your favorite aspect about Bitcoin? My favorite aspect about Bitcoin would have to be the accessibility globally without an intermediate party that could potentially grab a, a portion of it or stop it or block it. So I think it's global scale is what attracts me. And what is your least favorite part about Bitcoin? If there's any. My least favorite part is that I don't have enough. Ah, so what problem does Bitcoin help solve? Global remittance without having any third party interference. Becoming your own bank essentially. What advice would you give a new Bitcoiner? Don't get distracted by the flashy altcoins. You heard it here first. Bitcoin to the moon! My favorite part about Bitcoin is that I can take my money and transact with all my friends without going through a bank or a third party company. Like you don't have to trust another person's word or a bank. You can just trust the code. And what advice would you give a new Bitcoiner or somebody that's starting with Bitcoin? Don't go through any third party company. Don't go through any trading programs. Just buy Bitcoin from the source. What source? An exchange like Coinbase or Binance or Amber where oh. gas fees are cheap. You know, gas fees are cheap with Amber and then store it on your ledger. Perfect. It's one of those things where people call me a maxi, but I don't, I don't even call myself one, but I guess, yeah, it's kind of like a reluctantly accepting the label that has been put on us, but you know, whatever. Yeah, I guess what I mean by maxi though is, I mean, I think Bitcoin is going to become the money of the world. Basically, that's what I think. Well, do you buy other shit coins? No, I've never touched them. Ah, <laughs> yeah, okay. no, no. I'm Bitcoin only from day one for me. I started in 2013, never, never did any of that shit coin stuff. And what's your favorite part about Bitcoin? Well, for me, it's the freedom. I think it's really just that this, it's, it's what it enables for the world and what it enables in terms of changing our world to make it a better place. And I genuinely believe that. Of course, the wealth gains are cool too, but I genuinely think it's about the freedom. And what's your least favorite part about Bitcoin? I, I would say it's sometimes it's the difficulty of conveying that to people because it's, it can be quite a technical, multifaceted thing and it's like difficult for people to understand. So that's also something... But obviously, it's professionally my job to teach people Bitcoin things, but that's probably just one of, the, one of the hard things. At least today, it can be difficult to teach people that. And who taught you? Like, how did you convert to the world about Bitcoin? So for me, it was reading some of the early writers in the Bitcoin space. It was people like Tua de Mista, uh, Michael Goldstein, Pierre Richard, uh, who else? Conrad Graf was an early writer as well. Trace Mayer, before he started shitcoining. Eric Voorhees before he started shitcoining. So th those were some of my early influences when I was reading and learning about Bitcoin in kind of late 2012, early 2013. And what problem does Bitcoin help solve? Uh, a lot of things. So saving the ability of transacting under adversarial conditions, uh, people who want to basically transact when they have been shut down from the fiat system. That's obviously a thing where Bitcoin helps. But I think if there was one thing that I was teaching people, it would just be savings technology. So that's my friend Pierre Richard popularized that, but I would say it's savings technology is the main thing. What advice would you give someone that's coming new to Bitcoin, that's converting, or a new Bitcoiner? Yeah, I would say spend time understanding the different aspects. Right? There's economics, there's technical, and you, you need a mesh of both. And that's why I focus out on that in my podcast as well, so that people can learn about the different elements and aspects of Bitcoin, whether that's uh, the technical elements of the Lightning Network, how privacy works, how to secure your coins, what are the economics of it, what are, what's some of the history of it. And you, you have to understand the holistic aspect of it before you really appreciate it. And I think one thing just to uh, add there is that sometimes people just, they sort of dip their toe, but it's really worth your while to actually go deep and actually really study it and learn it. Stefan Libera. <laughs> if you look back at history, 
and uh, you can see how uh, the, the monetary system evolved. Uh, the reason why gold worked was because of a lot of different properties that it has. And uh, it has some weaknesses as well. Like one of them is it tends towards centralization. And um, in today's world where, you know, we've gone through a phase change where this is the first time in all of human history where we've had fiat currency be the global standard. And um, because of that, uh, we have unprecedented levels of control over everybody's lives, right? Because money makes up half of everything that everybody does. It's one side of the transaction. And uh, because of uh, the, the power that the central bankers and central planners have over money, um, they have that level of control over everybody's lives. And so having a, a system that has grown organically out of nothing, that has been adopted by so many people, um, and ha having those properties that gold has, but just uh, in some ways a little bit better, um, it, uh, it, it provides a way to kind of opt out and bet on what the uh, base money will be in the future. And what's your least favorite aspect about Bitcoin? If there are. Uh, yeah, up until about six months ago, I would have said the, uh, uh, the speed, the efficiency okay. issue. And um, I think the Lightning Network has now proved that that is flipped. And so like, I like to say that Lightning Network made 99% of altcoins irrelevant and they're all going to they're all going to become worthless because um, the only selling point was hey this is more efficient this is faster uh, because that was bitcoin's biggest its biggest strength was security but that was also its biggest weakness was because it made it slow lightning network has changed that um, i think the uh, i think the reliance on uh, internet technology um, the, the the fact that it's that there's a lot of advantages to that um, if we get a giant you know, solar flare that knocks out all of our computers, knocks out the internet, if we have nuclear war, then you know, those, those kind of things could potentially make Bitcoin like, not want to be used anymore, worthless. But I, I think in a lot of those scenarios, that's not gonna be your first problem. That's not gonna be the, yeah. <laughs> the first thing you're worried about, so. So what problem does Bitcoin solve? Um, well, it solves taking away the power of, um, uh, of control over money from the central planners. It decentralizes uh, the power over the money. Um, and uh, the second problem that I think is key is um, money is, a lot of people think money is wealth. Money is not wealth, money measures wealth. And so it's like a ruler. And so if you're trying to build a house and you have a tape measure where the inches keep on changing, you're going to build a house and the walls aren't gonna fit, this, the roof isn't gonna fit, things are gonna be broken, it's not gonna work. And as the measurement, which is dollars right now continues to change, you are making economic calculations on assumptions about reality that are false because the pricing mechanism is broken. And with, uh, with a fixed supply, as, uh, as money, with money has a fixed supply, then using that to measure so that you can economically calculate, um, all of the signal that you're receiving is, uh, is pure signal. You're not getting any distortion from the manipulation. And so the, I, I think the uh, biggest problem that it solves is allowing economic calculation to uh, happen without that manipulation from central planners anymore. Who would you say transformed you into Bitcoin or how did you start? Um, Saifedina Moose from his book, The Bitcoin Standard. Oh, that was, I, I did not really understand Bitcoin at all and therefore I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. I read his book and once I understood what it was and how it worked, that is what changed my mind. And do you have any advice for future Bitcoiners or new Bitcoiners that are starting? Yes. Uh, number one, learn about it. Um, uh, you, you, can't, uh, you can't reject something if you've um, made a decision to not understand it because then um, you're, uh, uh, you might be rejecting something off of uh, false assumptions about the world. And, uh, and so like I always tell my kids, you have to try every food before you tell me you don't like it. Like you can't tell me you don't like mushrooms if you're not gonna try them. And so uh, you have to learn about something before you can make an educated decision about it. So, and personally, everybody that I've ever seen that has actually put in the work to learn how it works and learn what it is, has realized, oh, all these talking points about Bitcoin um, that, uh, oh, it's MySpace, but there'll always be a, a, a Facebook, or it's um, the government's gonna stop it, all the talking points that are arguments against it that are usually used, um, they're 
usually um, uh, misunderstandings about Bitcoin. They're, they don't hold water against how it works. So would you say we're still early? Yeah, so uh, that's, yeah, you look at 60,000, 65,000, you're like, oh, I missed the boat. And the, the reality is, I look at Bitcoin as a binary situation where it's by design, uh, it is designed to be global reserve currency base money, universally used money. Um, so binary outcomes, 10, 20, 30 years, I don't know how long it takes, it either becomes money or nobody uses it and it goes to zero. Um, market cap wise in today's dollars, if it does become money, um, because there's only 21 million of them, it has to be at least a million and that's very conservative in today's dollars. And so uh, it's an asymmetric bet. It's, you could lose 60,000 if you buy one, you could lose 60,000 on the way down or you could make almost a million on the way up. And that's a very conservative estimate of what the value of the monetary system is given the size of today's economy. Who invented Bitcoin? I don't know. <laughs> Nobody, right? <laughs> Somebody, but we don't know who they are. How many Bitcoin are there? I don't know. <laughs> mm, easier. What is inflation? Inflation is the, <laughs> what is in a, the what? Increase in money supply. What is a dollar back? Is the dollar backed up? Um, I thought it used to be backed up by gold, but um, not really. They can just keep creating more and more yeah. of it, right? Yeah. Can Bitcoin be like shut down by the government? No, it can't. And do you have an estimate of how much Bitcoin will be by the end of the year? I would think maybe like 90,000 for Bitcoin. That, that would be my be. estimate. <laughs> what is Bitcoin? A cryptocurrency, but it's <laughs> one that's based off of math and not um, people. Is the dollar backed up by anything? Uh, it was supposed to be based off of gold, but now it's nothing. And who created Bitcoin? I don't know. Isn't it like in what one bin Bitcoin there's like a hundred thousand stats or whatever it's called? So yeah, this <laughs> Can Bitcoin be stocked? No. Thank you. I don't know anything. I'm like a newbie. Yeah. Um, do you know how many Bitcoin there are? How many Bitcoins are there? <laughs> no. I really don't know much of anything. I'm like very... Okay, what is inflation? I need to learn a whole lot more. I'm not really into... Who created the dollar? The US yes, dollar. The, uh, <laughs> the government? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what about... Oh Who's it backed up by? Or what does the dollar represent? The dollar, like money, is value? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm in terms of that. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. okay. No, but go, go learn. So what is your favorite aspect about Bitcoin? The sovereignty. What is your least favorite aspect? The amount of people that know about it. What would you say Bitcoin helps solve? Money, <laughs> consensus, decentralized networks, so trust. Like what advice would you give a new Bitcoiner, somebody that's about to join the field of the new money? Get exposure until you're competent enough to hold your own keys. We're here with the boss, the baby boss. Boom. Boom. So do you consider yourself a maximist? Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So what's your favorite part about Bitcoin? Uh, fuck you money, basically. This is the, the best feature of Bitcoin is to be fuck you money, taking away power from the governments on all kinds of levels. And this is the best feature that Bitcoin has. And your least favorite feature? No such thing. Bitcoin is perfect. It's perfect money. That's why I care about it so much. Oh no, the list perfect. The the list favorite feature is I don't have enough. Ah. Yeah. It's like what problem does Bitcoin solve? Fix the money, fix the world, right? So the levels it solves, like issuance. Obviously, we don't want uh, the controlling power to be able to print money and fund themselves. Uh, it solves human action, like human incentives, right? For sure, like low time preference is how humans should operate instead of like, let's buy all the Gucci's and uh, tomorrow I won't be able to eat. Um, so all that stuff. What do you say, like, do you have an estimate of what Bitcoin will be by the end of the year? One Bitcoin is one Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> and 
Last question. What advice would you give a new Bitcoiner or a new person that's joining the, the cult? <laughs> Uh, well, first thing, accept that you're not gonna have enough because I see a lot of people struggling with like, oh my god, I'm so late, that's it, I'm done. No, you're not late, you're still pretty early. Yes, you will never have enough Bitcoin, but one thing that really helped me to like accept that I'm not gonna have enough Bitcoin is I'm not planning to use all my Bitcoin. My Bitcoin is for my kids, I'm never selling, I'm gonna keep stacking for the rest of my life. And like, once you accept this mentality, you're like, okay, yes, I don't have enough, but you know, my stack is gonna grow, and I there's no certain amount of Bitcoin that I need in order to be like, okay, I'm I'm retired now because I'm not planning to retire in the in this way. Um, How did you convert to Bitcoin? Well, I'm coming from a country. <laughs> um, so I'm coming from a country where I've seen two hyperinflations by the age of 20. So for me, understanding that money system is broken was like, yeah, I know, duh, like I've seen it. So that was a really good lesson. And instead of taking it as like, oh, I was coming from a shitty country, I took it as a lesson and realized that all money systems are broken and we need a better one. So when Bitcoin came along and I actually, you know, dove into learning about it more, I was like, yep. That's, that's what we were looking for. And then on top of it, I had other experiences such as my cards would get frozen all the time. Um, and like, big one is unconfiscatable, 12 words. Come at me, bro. Come at me. Bitcoin to the moon! <laughs> Thank you so much, bro. Absolutely. Your talk was amazing. <laughs> what is your favorite part about Bitcoin? My favorite part about Bitcoin <laughs> big question. I think it's that it's transforming people. Like, people that really study Bitcoin and actually go down the rabbit hole, I don't see anyone that doesn't have a personal transformation. And I think that's the most important thing we need in the world right now. People are screwed up. We have corrupt incentives. We have corrupt people, corrupt characters. So, Bitcoin is like a forcing function, getting people to be honest, creative, uh, longer time horizons, all of these things. So it's it's good. It's like a good uh, a good medicine for the soul. I like that. What about your least favorite type about favorite thing about Bitcoin? Least favorite thing about Bitcoin, um, I think right now is that it's so ill understood. I end up answering the same types of questions repeatedly as a lot of Bitcoiners <laughs> do. Not yet. These questions are okay so far. Oh, but <laughs> I was like, crap. <laughs> um, people just don't know what's going on. You know, people don't know what gold is. They don't know why it's important. So they don't understand why the disruption of gold is so important. And it's getting better. People are waking up. People are asking good questions. But it's going to take time, I think. So. What problem would you say that Bitcoin solves? Well, Bitcoin solves a lot of problems. Um, in a nutshell, I would say that it's incorruptible money, which is a term we like to throw around a little bit. There's a lot to unpack there, but to have an incentive system that mankind cannot corrupt. So I tried to talk about it on the stage, but today, every institution that humans have ever made across history, we've also been able to destroy or corrupt or disparage in some way in a way that you know people seeking personal short-term gain comes at long-term cost. But with Bitcoin, it's like money or an institution that can't be broken. So it's the first man-made thing that man himself cannot corrupt. That's true. And last one, what advice would you give new Bitcoiners that are joining the rabbit hole? My advice to new Bitcoiners uh, is to stay focused on Bitcoin. A lot of people get distracted in the shitcoin jungle, and that can be, you can learn some in that domain, but I think you'll learn more just studying Bitcoin, history of money. Um, and I'll shamelessly plug, what is money? Let's tell the new Bitcoiners to keep asking themselves, what is money? And I think that is the rabbit that leads you down the rabbit hole. Thank you so much. Favorite thing about Bitcoin? Oh man. I think it's the way it's awakening a hunger and a renaissance of sovereignty. So it's bringing people back down to like a more earthy way of life, despite the fact it's a technology tool. And it's awakening a hunger for spirituality and things as well, because it's causing you, when you question, like, where do I store my life force and my monetary energy? 
about what am I producing that energy out of in the rest of my life a real value again versus just living in a paper economy. So you, do you consider yourself a maximist? Uh, I don't think so because I think that Bitcoin has facilitated the greatest free market experiment that we've ever seen. We've never had a niche carved out and protected crypt cryptographically that has enabled us to actually interface with a true free market economic environment. And I think an important sort of aspect of that is enabling innovation to proliferate, you know, without regulation. So. I really support the diversification because I think that the market will decide ultimately. So I don't really have a problem with shitcoins because I think it's a natural byproduct of uh, you know an emergent market and um, I like the innovation. I like people getting involved in the tech. I like people like understanding about decentralization because it's all part of the process of like understanding mentally about unplugging from the system. And so um, I like, you know, I like all the gamification. I like the whole sort of the, the different dimensions of the space. I like the ecosystem. Um, but, you know, I consult and I, I train people about crypto and I always train with Bitcoin because Bitcoin is the, the gold, the cryptographic gold. It is the, it is the digital gold. And um, it's really, really important if you're going to get involved in crypto in any level of blockchain to understand Bitcoin because everything came from Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the mother <laughs> of everything and I believe in that protocol, you know, I think the rest is an experiment. I think Bitcoin is proven, um, but I like the experiment, but you've got to know Bitcoin because that is the tried and tested, you know, it's the mother load and um, it's incredible technology. What would you say is your favorite part about Bitcoin? Um, I like the scale of the maths behind the cryptography. I like the cosmic nature of that. I like the interdimensionality of the protocol, that it like different elements of the protocol fulfill numerous different functions within one kind of incredible moving part oiled machine. I just think, you know, just the, 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 um, the geometry of the Bitcoin protocol as a protocol is like, you know, amazing. And if you're into sort of studying something like the pyramids of Giza and you're looking at the geometry of that kind of thing, and then you kind of map that against Bitcoin, you know, they're on the same level. So it's infinitely, like, infinitely <coughs> explorable Bitcoin because of the mathematics. You can go so deeply into it. You can go into the cosmic elements, the cryptographic elements, you know, the social elements, the economics, the tokenomics. There's so much to unpack, much like when you sort of unpack and understand the pyramids of the Giza Plateau. So I kind of liken them as the same thing. And the other thing, actually, I would say, quite possibly, you know, um, if you imagine like Jesus, when the only time he really had like an anger management problem was when he overthrew the tables <laughs> in the temple of the finan financiers. And um, I sometimes think, well, what if he had decided to go away and spend 2,000 years working on his anger management issues and then decided to reincarnate um, into this dimension, but as um, as code, would he come back and just fuck the banks up as an algorithm? I think it's possible. What would you say is your least uh, favorable aspect about Bitcoin? Mm. Well, I mean, I I can't really I don't can't really fault Bitcoin particularly. I think it's you know probably the best invention that humans that human times ever come out up with given that we pretty much are fucking up our entire environment and world and everything like it's necessary um, in a perfect world it wouldn't be but um, I do sort of feel sad when people only see it as an investment opportunity and they can't really see its potential and how it's literally you know this divine code has been gifted to us in a way that um, can actually finally give us an opportunity to free ourselves from the shackles and the bondage of like of, of slavery you know and people don't always understand that and they don't really understand the difference between getting off like centralized exchanges and non-custodial wallets and like you know i hope that everybody that gets into bitcoin can kind of understand about you know privacy and security and decentralization and immutability and understand all of these things as part of it because that for me is the real value because you're investing in a non-centralized free um free society for generations to come. That's the real investment for me. Um, do you have an estimate of what you think Bitcoin will be this by the end of the year? I think there are too many different forces to be able to accurately pre pre to predict that, you know, because there are so many different unseen forces and, and 
there's so many potential world events as well that I think it's foolish to really, you know, I think we can all agree that as a protocol, its, it's utility um, would indicate that it should have a much higher value because the power of its utility is so strong, especially when you juxtapose it with the dollar and things. But a lot of people think the dollar is going to crash. And yet, you know, we've heard today here that most likely it's going to be the safety currency for a lot of failing economies, which will drive the price up. So, um, you know, I think that obviously Bitcoin has got a much has got a much stronger utility compared to the U.S. dollar. But short term, there's so many different factors going on geopolitics and stuff that is hard to predict. I don't like to do that. Part about Bitcoin. My favorite part about Bitcoin would be that by changing the way that I'm able to store my wealth for a long term, it changes the way that I look at everything, and so the rest of my life turns to longer time frames which allows me to think longer term I guess my least favorite part about Bitcoin um, <laughs> these are big questions uh, shoot Bitcoin solves the biggest problem of all which is taking away the state's ability to print money and it helps in the nation state and when we take away the government's ability to print money, then we can fix pretty much every other problem in the world. Do you have an estimate of what the Bitcoin will be by the year, end of the year? By the end of the year, I would say it'll be over 100,000 US dollars. Ooh, that'd be nice. <laughs> what made you convert into Bitcoin? What got me interested in Bitcoin the first time I bought it was I was actually looking at setting up an offshore bank account and setting up a trust in Panama so that I could get my money out of the banking system. And when I looked at, another, when I looked at Bitcoin, I was like, it's the same thing. I get my money out of the banking system. So that's what first caught my eye. What advice would you give to new Bitcoiners or people that are just joining the movement about Bitcoin? I would say that you would want to start somewhere. Could be $5, could be $10. You want to start somewhere small. Because when you put a little skin in the game, then you're more interested in it. And then I would say, take the time to really learn and understand it. I've never met one person who has taken the time to learn it and understand it and walked away, ever. Thank you. Do you know who invented Bitcoin? Well, today I found out it's a guy named Satoshi. <laughs> <laughs> How many stats are in a Bitcoin? Well, that I know, uh, 110 million. And how many Bitcoin are, are there? 21 million. And that's all the info I picked up today, right? Is Bitcoin backed up by something? Well, what I came to realize today that Bitcoin is, is like a function of time and energy. And it's like the two like, non-fungible like, laws of physics. So I guess the, it, Bitcoin is backed by almost like God. Because these are the two things that are outside human domain, time and energy. None of us have control over it. Like, mm -hmm. we cannot create energy and we cannot get more time than we have. So the time spent, like the proof, this is the ultimate proof of work. And that's all the terms that I'm picking up from today's uh, conference, but it just makes so much sense. So is it backed up by something? It's backed up by, by constants of laws of physics, I guess. What would you say the dollar is backed up of? Without swearing, right? You can swear. Well, besides bullshit, uh, <laughs> not not really much. I mean, they backed up by by the military. They backed up by the uh, by the promise to keep peace. Uh, basically, by uh, by security, the government is trying to to sell using those dollars. What would you say? Who prints the dollar? They, I don't think they print it. They just add zeros in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it's just oh, we need a couple of more that's it. There's no more, no more printing involved, at least saving the trees, yeah? So what is inflation? Well, inflation is basically unsecured, well, inflation. It's devaluing, it's devaluing, devaluing of the value, I guess, of the money. Basically, inflation is, is legalized theft of your assets. So it's kind of like counterfeiting is the illegal way of doing inflation. Inflation is the legal way of counterfeiting. 
That's I stole it from Robert. <laughs> Thank you so much. My pleasure. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. Was a Bitcoin. Yeah.